With Computex upon us, the hardware leaks have been insane, really. There are so many hardware leaks that if it was a pipe, you probably would have drowned in your mother's basement trying to patch them all while gurgling your last words, NVIDIA or death, AMD or freedom, or some shit. I can't think of anything truly poetic right now. I'm going off the top of my head all the time. Bam, 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 bam. AMD's R9 Threadripper lineup, which leaked about, oh, 16 hours ago. Hmm, I thought it leaked earlier than that. All right, a few days back, Intel Skylake X-Core i9 CPU lineup leaked. This came out with some pretty whopping stuff. It seemed fairly impressive at the time, in all honesty. It seemed cool, but Lord knows, as soon as I started reading the SKUs, I knew it was gonna be expensive as fucking shit. Not to be outdone, AMD just recently leaked and rumored the R9 series, the Red Ripper CPUs, to pretty much combat Intel. It's now a CPU arms race. It seems kind of crazy, like now all of a sudden, like the CPU market is like just moving, you know? Like before it didn't do shit and now all of a sudden everything's happening. Andy's entire R9 Threadripper CPU lineup has been leaked and it's featuring a 16, 14, 12, and 10 core parts SKU with clock speeds as high as 4.1 gigahertz. The company's brand new enthusiast grade CPU architecture lineup is set to launch this June, bringing the company outside of Zen's architecture to the high-end desktop market. It's codenamed Threadripper. Bleh. Who cares, really? Threadripper. It makes me think of, like, Judas Priest. If Judas Priest came into the AMD room and they're like, All right, love, here's the new CPU name, Threadripper. Since we can't use Turbo Lover. It will be compatible with modified versions of the company's SP3 socket, which is originally the SP3 R2, which was originally designed for AMD's 32-core Naples server parts SKU on the high-end desktop platform, codenamed White Heaven. Which is quite interesting for the simple fact of, okay, like for me personally, I don't really do servers, but if this is compatible with a modified version of the SP32, you could theoretically get away with using this for server use at a much lower price point, considering that the Intel uh, server CPUs are like well over $2,000. So even if the top of the line Ryzen R, whatever the fuck this is, sorry, it is Ryzen. Ryzen R9 1998X came out and we all know it's got to be kissing a thousand or more dollars. That's still a lot cheaper than over two grand. Theoretically, I don't know for sure. I'm just saying the possibility could be there and that could really cannibalize Intel's market. But then again, AMD already has a server. You know, they already have the server thing coming Naples or it's already out. But you know, just for somebody on the cheap, this is an option now. In my personal opinion, I don't know for sure. The Ryzen R9 1998X is allegedly the flagship new lineup feature 16 core, 32 gigabyte base clock speed at 3.5 gigahertz with a boost clock of 3.9 gigahertz with the extended frequency range. This CPU is only rated 155 watts, five watts less than Intel's upcoming i9 7920X 12 core flagship Skylake CPU. This is like their answer. Uh, the Ryzen R9 1998 and the 1998X will feature 16 cores and slightly lower clock speeds of 3.2 gigahertz and 3.6 boost. Uh, the Skylake version, or the Skylake one, uh, I think that's only what, 12 cores? I'm pretty sure it is, let me double check. The Skylake i9-7920X is only going to be a 12 core versus the AMD version which is going to be a 16 core. Now the latest, was like, see right there. It's kind of like a real whop in the nuts. And from what WCCF Tech says, and I've seen on other sources, is that the new i9 series is gonna be having a power wattage of 160. But if you dig deeper and look around, PC Parts Perspective is now claiming that the 7920X will only have 140 watt TDP. Who's, who's right, who's wrong, I don't know. It's all speculation still, if you ask me. Uh, let's see, the latest specifications for the 7920X aren't confirmed by Intel as of yet, but they are very juicy in terms of details. The first and most interesting detail is that Intel is finally going to stop using the age-old Core i7 branding on their high-end processors and go straight to the Core i9 branding. The new Skylake X processor family is targeted at a very high-end enthusiast and multitasking geared desktop PCs that require top-notch performance in various tasks. Basically, Let's not kid ourselves here. This is essentially for content creators, you know, people who edit movies 
literally real movies and shit like that possibly uh or their own you know independent films uh youtube let's say big twitch streamers you know the guys who actually have companies that pay them attention Whereas to the companies treat me like ass. Nobody cares. Um, it's geared towards them. Don't expect these <laughs> CPUs to offer you any huge benefit in gaming. As I have to reiterate, few games do more. Few games do anything with anything more than four cores. You know, eight logical threads. So yeah, I think the only game that really tries anything with more cores, I think like six or so, is. Ashes of Singularity, I'm not 100% sure. The 7920 X processor featuring 12 cores and 24 threads. The total cache of this behemoth is 16.5 megabytes in L3, although lower than the whole cache featured the previous HEDT, although lower than the whole cache featured on previous HEDT processors, the new cache runs more efficiently and reduces chip size and cost while delivering better performance. The chip it will feature quad-channel IMC, allowing for up to eight DDR4 DIMMs, two per channel, clocked 200, uh, 2,066, 100 megahertz natively. I love like the promotional photos for this shit too. It's like basically Twitch streamers. You know, that's what they're, they're like. This will be great for your gaming, Twitch streamers, and probably Twitch streamers will pay for it. I mean, I could see it being overkill in price of Intel without a shadow of a doubt because Intel cannot offer these chips at too low of a price or else they've cannibalized their own market for server chips you know so intel is in a rock and a hard place they want to be competitive but they can't be too competitive price wise because if they are they're gonna fuck themselves in the server market and it's already coming as soon as amd launches naples or whatever the fuck it's called unless it's already happened i know a lot of people are excited about it in the server realm not me because i don't really care about servers i don't know much about them uh, maybe i'll give a shit when i have a website good god you suck as a journalist for amd their next lower tier is the 14 core thread ripper which is the r9 1977x and the 1977. these will come with 14 core parts these cpus will have 155 watt tdp 14 cores 28 threads and the part is based with a core clock of 3.5 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.1 gigahertz with XFM, I mean XFR, forgive me. Uh, the R9 1977 features a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz and a boost clock of 3.7 gigahertz and a slightly lower TDP of 140 watts. Now you're pretty much in the same fuck. Even the second lower tier AMD is offering you more cores and threads than the Intel's top offering. Now the 12 core Ryzen CPU, which is the 1976X and the 1956X and the Ryzen 1956. These will be the 12 core thread rippers. Allegedly consisting of three SKUs, the Ryzen R9 1976 and all of the above I mentioned, is a 12 core, 24 thread, 140 watt part with a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.1 gigahertz with XFR. Uh, let's see, the 1956X is a 25 watt part. Again, 12 cores, 24 threads, runs at a base clock of 3.2 and it boosts to 3.8 gigahertz with XFR. The entry level 12 core is the 1956. It's rated at 125 watts, mm -hmm. runs the base clock of 3.0 with a boost of 3.7. The entry level Ryzen chip is the 12 core. The top of the line Intel chip is a 12 core kind of crazy and i have a feeling the price difference will be astronomical now we're moving down to the 10 core thread ripper which will be the ryzen 1955x and the ryzen 1955 10 cores both are at 125 watt tdp uh the 1955x runs at a base of 3.6 gigahertz with a boost of 4.0 gigahertz xfr and the 1955 3.1 hertz uh, gigahertz with a boost of 3.7 gigahertz. Everything's quad channel DDR4. Uh, we have the next tier of Intel. I wanted to do them comparatively, reading off the stats of everything one by one, but unfortunately, when I look at it, Ryzen is offering a whole lot more bang for the buck, obviously, because that's pretty much how AMD rolls. AMD solves problems by throwing more cores at it, and Intel solves more problems by stronger single core performance. But on the other end, the single core performance Intel charges you a crazy ass premium, in my opinion. So I wanted to 
you know, put them back to back. But frankly, you look 16 core, 14 core, 12 core is the entry level. And then the low end is the 10 core. By the time we get to Intel's side for the Skylake X, their next lower tier, which is a 10 core, 7900X. This is Intel's massive multitasking processor. It features 10 cores and 20 threads. A replacement to the Core i7 6950X. But on the Skylake architecture, the chip would feature a total of 13.75 megabytes L3 cache, I'm pretty sure. That's 1.375 megabytes per core. The core clocks are maintained at 3.3 gigahertz and the boost of 4.3 gigahertz. With Intel's Turbo 2.0, and 4.5 gigahertz boost with Intel Turbo 3.0 that vastly improves over the current models and the chip will supposedly feature good overclocking capabilities with a TDP of 160 watts. The chip will have 44 PCI E Gen 3.0 lanes. Um, every Ryzen R9 chip also features that. So the chip will be aimed as a fast multi-threaded option for users who cannot afford the Core i9-7920X. I think there's a lot of users that can't afford any of these chips on this SKU except for the real low end ones like the 6 core. Forgive me. It is expected to launch on June 26 for the price of $1000 or beyond. There is a chance that Intel may give Skylake X more competitive pricing based on the fact that Ryzen 7 is already out in the marketing for AMD is soon going to launch their HEDT X99 processors, which we've just already talked about. Intel's Core i9-7820X is their more cost-effective 8-core CPU with 16 threads. It will be replacing the i7-6900K for under $1,000. Uh, it will ship with 8 core 16 threads. The chip will be clocked at 3.6 gigahertz base, 4.3 gigahertz boost with Turbo 2.0 and 4.5 gigahertz base with Turbo 3.0. The chip carries 11 megabytes of L3 cache and will feature 28 PCIe Gen 3 lanes. This processor is going to feature a TDP of 140 watts. The chip will be a replacement for the 6900K, like I've said before which has been very popular chip on the Intel current X99 enthusiast platform. The chip will also launch in June and it will directly tackle on Ryzen's 1800X, although the price wise, it could sell for a higher version of the 1800X. So where's the real gimmick there? Like if you know that it's not really killing the 1800X too much, or the 1800X is kind of outperforming it in most cases, and the 1800X is $500, and you know that this is gonna be more than $500, the only reason to get the Intel is if you were really dead set on Intel. If you're like just the average person trying to get the most bang out of your buck, the Ryzen still wins. Intel's i9-7800X, Intel's most affordable six core 12 thread option in the Skylake X family. Lastly, we have the most affordable Skylake X option of the four. Do note that when they say Skylake X and not the entire X22 family, as there are also Cabby Lake X chips coming to the X22 platform. The Core i9-7800X is going to feature six cores, 12 threads, and will carry a total of 8.25 megabytes of L3 cache with a clock speed for this chip maintained at 3.5 gigahertz base and 4.0 gigahertz of Turbo Boost 2.0. There is no 3.0 Turbo Boost for this chip. But Skylake X has one significant advantage on all the chips. The L2 cache has been increased from 256 kilobytes to one megabyte per core. And that will lead to improvement in overall performance of the system. The chip will feature a TDP of 140 watts and will be available in June. This, this part will directly tackle Ryzen 5's 1600X with a six core and 12 core threads, but would likely come at a higher price tag since AMD's part costs $249 in the US and the 6800K which is the Core i9-7800KX was close to $400 in US pricing. Okay, I see. So we're looking at it around $350 to $380. I could go on verbatim continuously, but frankly, uh, I'm going to get burnt out and this video will go on for way longer than I ever anticipated. The CPU market is definitely heating up and I have to say kudos to AMD for uh, actually making it competitive again. It's been so long since the CPU market has made any major movements. It really took AMD kicking Intel on the balls for Intel to actually pull something out of their ass. But like I said before, do not think for a minute that Intel will be too competitive with prices. Their high-end CPUs, if they are too low, 
will cannibalize their own market as far as servers go. Also, uh, members of the community have taken the time to look at the CPUs that are coming out in June or being revealed in June, Computex, whatever. And frankly, here's the thing. They put out their own little idea of what prices may be. Speculation for the top Ryzen CPU, which is the 1998X, is around $1,200. On the Intel variety, though, speculation is believed that the 12-core 24-thread 7920X is going to be around $1,500. The 7900X, $1,000. The 7820X, which is supposed to be their affordable 8-core, is $600. Supposedly, this is just speculation from the community what people think it'll be. One part of me wants to think that the 7820X isn't too bad of a price considering wasn't the 8-core like $1,000 last gen. So that could be a real big move from Intel to be competitive, but not enough really. When the Ryzen variant would be a 10-core 20-thread at around the same price. I'll just put up this for you to look at, speculate, and think about yourself. Um, honestly, it's an interesting bit of news. Things will be hopefully more interesting in the next couple actually in the next two months right the next month is june so we'll see how much of this is true how much of this is false and how bad it'll hit people in the wallet and then the real speculation comes uh when the benchmarks finally leak and i think this is a good sign that if cpus are finally going for way more fucking cores that gaming might actually make it past four cores and eight threads or six cores and 12 Let's just move on into the future, hopefully. Well, that's gonna do it for me. I don't feel this is quite informative because my thoughts were everywhere and frayed and it was trying to like put all these things together at once and trying to compare them. And I probably failed at that uh, substantially. I do apologize if this is subpar. I can't actually give more of a fuck than me. And what that basically means is I barely care and I can't ask you to care more than me about anything. You can't do that to people. Rate, comment, subscribe, Facebook, Twitch to Twitter. Instagram I don't really post on, but it's there. I, I don't know. These companies care that I have a following like that. And uh, adios pichachos, man.